Hey guys, how you doing? Simon here. I get a lot of questions of about how do I start with rental properties or how do I start investing in real estate? And in this video today, we're going to go ahead and go into how to uh, get your first rental property or your first uh, real estate purchase. Before I go into this video, go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe. As always, I appreciate your comments, feedbacks and your support. Thanks guys. Let's get into it. Before buying your first property, you really want to know your reasoning for the purchase. Are you buying the property as an investment? Is it your first home you're purchasing, a condominium and so forth? Here's a couple tips for different scenarios that I've compiled with my experience. As someone that owns six properties in the Bay Area, each property valued at over a million dollars, I've learned a lot of things from the beginning that will help motivate you to potentially purchase your first or your second even if you already have one. So if you've never purchased a property, you really got to understand how the financing part of purchasing works. Not a lot of us, including myself, have a million or two or three million dollars to drop on any building just like that. We're not trust fund babies and we really want to get into the game. So you really got to understand your assets as well as your debt to income ratio to secure that loan. If you have debt, you also need to make sure you pay down that debt. So if you have any credit card debt or if you have any type of other debt that can hurt your debt to income ratio, how much money you make versus how much money you owe, that will prevent you potentially from getting a loan from the bank. If you don't have a great income that will allow the bank to see a debt to income ratio of about 30 to 40 percent, then you can also purchase a property with a method by having the seller finance your purchase. So for example, you could go into your first property, whether it's commercial or residential, and then you could ask the seller that's selling it to finance your purchase for two or three years. So you could actually own the property, agree the amount of payments you would be making to the owner to carry that loan. Sometimes the owner may not have a loan, but they would like to receive say 15, 10,000, $5,000 a month for three years before you get enough money to refinance that loan that he has or get him out of that loan and actually get your own loan on the property. So that is an option. Seller financing is a good way to go about it if you have zero down payment. If you do have a down payment, keep in mind the banks nowadays are asking for about 25 to 30 percent uh, of a down payment down. They're being a little bit more frugal with giving out their loans because they're afraid of a potential economic collapse with the coronavirus and unemployment rates and so forth. So they're not handing out loans like they were before. Now they're verifying your business uh, statements. They're verifying your pay stubs to make sure that you actually have deposited uh, those pay stubs into your bank accounts versus say making them up or forging them or whatever I don't recommend doing but they have uh, been a little bit more stringent and they're uh, making sure everything is checked off so they're not going to give you a loan without a good income they want to make sure you're still employed they want to make sure that there's no mass deposits in the last several months and if you're a self-employed they're going to ask for PL statements for the first quarter and the second quarter of the year as well as a PL, which is a profit and loss statement at uh, uh, as of July or August at the end of the month, etc. So they're getting very uh, stringent with what they're looking for specifically to make sure that you're not uh, making these documents up to get a loan. A lot of people call that creative financing, which is uh, going around their system to make it look good on paper for you to get the loan. And a lot of bankers haven't been known to do this, unfortunately. So make sure all your paperwork is in order. There are different types of properties you could actually invest in as your first property. My first investment was a con condominium in downtown San Francisco. I purchased it in 2009 and I bought it at a good price. It was actually half a million dollars is what I paid for it. I actually bought it straight from the developer who actually developed several other buildings since then. So congratulations. I paid 500,000 today. That property is worth about a million dollars. It has a patio of about 1200 square feet that overlooks downtown. And it's a great building that I personally uh, still uh, love. So I have a, a, a joy of re-renting it to the proper tenants. When you do buy your first property, there are ways to make it so that you don't have to fully fund your loan. I bought a condo, but I lived in the condo at that time. And if you're looking to live in the place, just make sure you could afford that monthly mortgage payment. But at the same time, account for all the utilities. You got water, power, garbage, uh, internet, and so forth. So there's a lot of utilities that could potentially could come with a property. If you're in a condominium, there's also an HOA fee, which always goes up. So keep that in mind. One good piece of advice I could give you is 
potentially invest in a multi-unit property. So let's say there's two units in one building. You can live in one unit while renting out the other one that can cover some of your mortgage payment on the entire complex. That's one way to really get into real estate uh, to be able to use that rental income as a potential income to offset your mortgage payments. Right now on the rise are single family residences. The reason is people are allowed to work from anywhere. In fact, Facebook said they don't want people to come in until next July or something like that. That's pretty crazy. So what's happening is a lot of people are moving out of the cities into the suburbs. There's also a mass exodus from California, which is where I'm from, because of high tax rates. And I'll go into another video on about these taxes and what it does to the state. A lot of people are moving out from the city to the suburbs. So residential areas are becoming even harder to acquire. Single family homes I'm talking about because they want more land. They want more outdoor space for their kids for themselves they want more space inside the house to take their meetings and so forth so a one bedroom two bedroom condo is becoming very tight when you and your wife are constantly working together in the same kitchen <laughs> check out is it a good time to buy real estate on my channel that's up now it's actually in the video here and I go over where you should potentially purchase a property if you're looking to buy now as well when buying your first property I always recommend you buy at entry-level pricing entry level is what is the lowest or pretty much next to the lowest price point you can get into in your market. So if you live somewhere where entry level prices is $250,000 on the house, but there's obviously houses selling for 700 or 500,000, try to get your first house in the $250,000 range to maybe $300,000 range. For example, my condo at the time, 500,000 was entry level rock bottom pricing for a condominium in downtown San Francisco. And I was confident in buying that property because I knew I could sell it at any time. It would not be an issue for me to get rid of it, even get rid of it a couple years later for profit if I ever needed to. I also knew because San Francisco was at the time a hotbed for rentals, I would be able to rent it out. And today I still rent that condo, which is about 700 square feet for $4,600 a month, which is a profit way past my mortgage. I'm making a passive income of nearly $2,000 on renting one condo, which is pretty insane. Your first property may be a commercial purchase. Now commercial could be several different things. It could be a warehouse, an office building, a senior home, whatever it is. Commercial also can be multifamily units of five or more units, five or more, not four. There are different losses sets and rules and uh, you, different evaluations of your property. If you're buying a commercial property, you really need to understand right now, maybe a difficult time, a lot of commercial retail spaces are going for lease. A lot of people aren't paying their uh, rental fees and so forth, businesses are shutting down. But if you are gonna buy a commercial property, you need to understand, are you buying it to move in or are you buying it to rent out? If you're gonna be buying it to rent out, personally, I would be a little hesitant. I think the market is heading downward for commercial properties. A lot of places don't need people to come in anymore it's it's more online focused and it's also depends on the type of property but for example if you purchased an office building in the last two years and you were counting on people renting that office building while everyone's doing this work from home type thing companies are downsizing they're lowering their rent expense and they're allowing people to work from home not having to pay uh, an expensive rental on the commercial property so it's a weird time for that I did buy a commercial property this year we've actually are started remodeling it and I'll do an update on the remodel there's a video up that you could check out on my first commercial purchase and the reason I bought that commercial property is because I was going to be using it uh, for multiple businesses my wife was going to be using it for her business and so forth so we uh, decided it was a good idea versus renting which we've which I've been doing for almost 12 13 years so commercial is a good thing if you could do it right you can manage it just don't in count on a potentially external rental income right now it's a little bit risky there are different types of loans you could get by the way so let's just discuss loans without a loan uh, a lot of us probably I would say 99% of us cannot buy a property without a loan so here are some examples of loans you could do there are different loans you could get for residential purchases there are 10 and 7 year arm loans which is a fixed rate for a certain amount of time those are dangerous loans in my opinion if you don't have a high income so for example if you get a 7 year arm loan you don't have a high income to refinance that loan in 7 years you're gonna be upside down on this property. Forget about it, it'll probably go in foreclosure. This happened to my father. He had a, one of those arm loans where the rate was adjustable after a certain amount of time. He wasn't able to refinance such a big loan of seven, eight $800,000 when that arm 
came to fruition. He almost lost his property. In fact, I had to fight it off for two years to keep it for him and eventually ended up paying down what he didn't pay for loans and buying out the property myself. So be careful with that, but that is an easier loan to get. There's also conventional financing. So you have your 30 year and 15 year fixed, which is what I recommend from banks. Always look at the big lenders. Uh, you got Chase, you got Bank of America, Wells Fargo, First Republic. These lenders are great, but you want to go in to your first property purchase with a pre-approval letter. You want to make sure the banker reviews your finances. You have to have a good pre-approval letter and you should not get it from one of these uh, third party mortgage servicers because when you present your offer and if you're in a competitive environment where there's also cash offers, which in the Bay Area where we live, there are people buying two million, three million dollar homes with cash or they're putting 50% uh, down on a $5 million home or even 50% down on a $1.5 million home. So people have a million dollars laying around and here you are coming in with an offer which you could be more aggressive and offer say $100,000 more on a $1.5 million property. But if you don't have your quality pre-approval letter from a big shot lender, they're gonna say, ah, take the cash deal because it's for sure it's guaranteed or take this Chase pre-approval or Wells Fargo pre-approval versus some no-name mortgage pre-approval that's probably just written out on a piece of paper. Who knows if this person could get a loan? So get a quality pre-approval letter as well. So down payment. Nowadays, they're requiring 20 to 25% for down payment. Again, we covered that a little bit earlier, but you could get into a property at a minimum of 10% down. So if your first property, let's say it's $200,000 down, you've saved 20 and hustled for $20,000, you're actually in the game. You need to start shopping for a pre-approval letter and getting your first property. I highly recommend you do that to build long-term wealth. Another thing you need to account for is the closing costs. So closing costs in a loan also add in to your final cost. On a 1.5, $1.7 million property, you could have $20,000, $30,000 of closing costs pretty easily. So keep that in mind. That does get added to your loan if you're pre-approved for a loan, but that's something you also need to keep in mind when you're putting down your down payment. So if you buy a $1.5 million home, you're putting 20% down, which is 300,000. You technically need to have about 330, 340. And then the bank wants to see you have six to 12 months of payments as well. So if your payment is say $5,000 a month, they wanna make sure you have like 60 to $100,000 laying around to carry you for 12 months. Don't give up. Your first property is the hardest property to purchase. When you finally purchase your first property, I will assure you that a second property will come right after that. I've always set goals. I want to own a property, one property back in the day, every five years. So my goal was to have a property by 25, then another property by 30, which I did, then another property by 35. And what happened from there is I said, screw this five-year system. I'm going to buy as many as I can. So this last year, we bought two properties in the value of a near $3 million. And I'm very fortunate to be able to do it. And I'm looking to purchase another property even in this weird economic time now. And even though some of my businesses are down, I'm still on the grind. I'm doing everything I can to make sure that we stay afloat. And when the economy resumes, I'm gonna go back up as well. I do wanna add another thing to that. Where do I look for properties when I purchase properties and how do I approach a seller or a selling agent? For most of my properties, I looked myself on Redfin or Zillow or any of these websites that list uh, real estate properties from the MLS. I usually find out who's selling the property. I look at the purchase history of the property to see what the profit from the seller is. And then I contact the selling agent. I contact them with a remark that I don't have agent that represents me. So what it does is it connects me with the selling agent and they give me a little bit more insight. I like to be represented by the seller. They're more motivated to sell to me. Oftentimes with bigger companies, they will not represent you because there's a conflict of interest. However, they refer you to someone within their company as well and they talk. So if an offer, my offer comes in at 1.5 and another guy's offer comes in at 1.5, but they're from a different agencies where agents don't work together, don't know each other, they're more likely gonna push my offer to that seller realistically because they, the company profits and they both profit and their colleagues. So always come into an offer or property trying to have that agent that's selling that property represent you or have them refer you to a colleague. That's a really good tip and I actually got two properties that way over the competitor and it helped me a lot. Anyway guys, I hope you liked this video on buying your first real estate property. Please go ahead, hit the like button and subscribe. Check out my other videos on real estate on the channel including my commercial remodel. I do have another property that I will be launching on YouTube where it's a complete 
uh, from the ground foundation up remodel that I'll be working on and I've been working on for about a year. I definitely appreciate the love. Hit that like button and subscribe and hopefully you guys get your first real estate property or rental property and have some passive income as well. Thanks guys. See you later.